Along this way we have walked with Christ. Along this way we have shared his table. Along this way he has washed our feet. Along this way we approach the cross. Along this way we fear the path. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. On this day, we recall the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear John's account, we focus on seven moments during that day. And as darkness still seeks to conquer the light, pause to reflect on our own sin and that of the world. At the end of each reading, we will have a time of silence. Let us pray. God of the daytime and the nighttime, God of light and darkness, God of joy and sorrow, we worship you. Through you alone, we are able to know that even in the darkest hours, hope is present through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit testifies, saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. 
I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of those, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. First moment, ecce homo. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they all shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here is the man, Echi Homo, the Roman prefect, said as he offered Jesus to the crowd, no name now for this nuisance man whose silent threat causes such alarm. Yet even the no-name Ecce Homo has become a title for paintings and sculptures and verse over the centuries. A no-name title became his title, and a no-name handing over soon to become his fate. Ecce Homo. The Word Made Flesh. Second Moment, Gabbatha. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king, they cried out. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, 
Lord have mercy. The third moment, Golgotha. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The article was finished and passed on to the editor for approval. Within a few minutes, the call came. Are you sure you want to say this? She asked. It's what happened, the reporter replied. Those were the words that were used. But they don't quite reflect our brand, fit in with our readers. Maybe you could say it seemed, or it appeared that, or she was unclear. But she wasn't. She was clear about what was said and when it occurred and what was meant by it. Very clear. Okay, the editor responded. If it goes wrong, I'll take the flack. Let it be as you have written. Pilate, in a moment of bravery, insists on what has been written. No fudging. The king of the Jews it is. Even in the face of the crowd, it's, sometimes it has to be said as it is. Even when the mood of the crowd threatens, sometimes it needs to be said as it is. The fourth moment, pierced. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture said. They divided my clothes among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. That is what the soldiers did. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Fifth moment, here is your mother. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to his disciples, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her into his own home. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In a moment, all can change. That moment of fearful, angelic promise. That moment of Bethlehem's birth pains and the first nursing that moment of fleeing, that moment. So many moments with him. And now this moment, this handing over as the care given to him from birth to death is now received from him. And in this moment, a new home for him and for me. Sixth moment, finished. 
After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Finished. So final a word. But what is every but what is ever really finished, accomplished, completed, except life itself? A race run, a record set, only serves to herald the next attempt. A new champion and holder of the prize. But once for all, a death of life and obscuring of light, bringing darkness in its wake, as a moment of completion is echoed with finality. Finished, the end, extinguished light, but only till a brighter dawn. Seventh moment. Pierced. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other, who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Seven moments of the ordinary. Crowds, fear, power, inhumanity, inhumanity made ordinary. And so it continues as those with power quash unrest, break limbs, execute troublemakers, instill fear. As the chilling ordinariness of shoes and spectacles piled high, whilst those who had chosen and bought them, cleaned them and worn them, are nameless numbers in a place of everyday death. No names, each loved by God, but treated as less than human by others, who, being loved by God themselves, risk their very humanity. And we pause, and we wonder, in seven moments of ordinary violence, what would be different? Other days will soon come. The deep, deep sorrow of a garden visit met with a name. A fear-filled room gathering an unexpected visitor. A sad path home becoming a way back to hope. A picnic transformed into a place of restitution. But for now, the candles are extinguished and the darkness prevails. Let us pray. We pray for those whom the terrifying has become the ordinary, for victims of warfare, 
for children and mothers unable to live in homes that are their own, for fighters who have become immune to the cries of others, and for politicians who hear only praise. Lord of the Cross, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves. If we have become immune to those who suffer, who have no name, who count for little, we ask for forgiveness for those times when we fail to speak and act. Lord of the Cross, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who remind us that even in the shadow of pain, humanity may shine forth. We give thanks for those who care for the dead and the dying, for those who bring hope. Lord of the Cross, hear our prayer. Lord of the Cross, in you alone do we find our hope, even when hope is gone. Amen. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. When hope has left, still we watch and wait. When darkness prevails, still we search for light. When the road is hidden, still we seek a guide. Christ of the cross, hold us in these moments as we wait for a garden vision, a mealtime revelation, a locked room blessing, and a lakeside renewal. We go in peace.